I think we have everyone that's going to join for now. So I just wanted to thank everyone who's in the gallery, everyone who's in the hallway, and everyone who's on Zoom. Um, welcome to um, Externalized and to Courtney's very specific part of this exhibition, which is our three professional practices students. And we're very excited to have the opportunity to show their work in the gallery. Um, I'm Megan Rickepsel, I'm the gallery director, and uh, we are gonna let Courtney tell us a little bit more about her work. Thank you, Megan, for making this happen and helping set up the show and everything in between with the marketing material and the brochures and everything. Um, it's just amazing that you can do this despite the time, and we're so appreciative. Um, well, I, I would also like to thank um, all the artists that I interviewed for this, um, which includes Chris Lonigan, Caroline Sullivan, um, Daphne Steinberg, Richard Broder, Iris Benjamin. Um, I, I genuinely enjoyed all of our conversations. Um, I was looking to start building a creative community, um, but I found in doing that with each conversation, we either created a friendship or we strengthened one. Um, I would also like to thank um, everyone who supported me throughout the series, especially my uh, wonderful art professors, Billy Friebel, uh, Julie Sayo, Dan Schlafback, and of course, Mary Beth Baker. Um, uh, thank you for mentoring, providing materials, photographing, and everything in between. Uh, I think you have been some of the most valuable connections that I have made at my connection, uh, my experience at Loyola. Um, I would also like to thank Peter Butler for letting me use his workshop for my uh, window frame piece here. Um, I had to do some sanding and drilling, which I don't have experience in, uh, so he helped me out with that. Um, and then I would also like everyone who, who either made me dinner or just <laughs> helped me out the past couple of weeks, um, fueled my creative process, whether that was with leftovers when I returned well past dinner time from the studio, or uh, just through support and love. And then finally, of course, I'd like to thank my family um, for always supporting my creative endeavors, so whatever crazy things they may be. Um, so I'll just hop into what my series is all about. Um, but what I was looking to do was build um, a creative community by connecting with other artists. Um, so I interviewed five artists, um, a philosopher, Chris Lonigan, who's um, I guess self-proclaimed philosopher, uh, but also a professor and wonderful artist. Um, a female artist, um, Daphne Steinberg. Um, she does mostly collage and photography. Um, landscape architect, Caroline Sullivan. Um, and then two jazz musicians, uh, Richard and Iris. Um, this is how I identify them in the simplest terms, although um, I realize that their identities are multifaceted and ever-changing. Um, and that's sort of what I discovered uh, by doing these pieces. Um, sort of a background on myself as an artist. Growing up, I was extremely shy. Um, every move I made, every word that I spoke was like very carefully thought, thought out. Um, and even in doing that, I was still judged for being too quiet. And then in connection to that, when I did speak, it was even more pressure because people were wondering what it was that I was finally gonna say when I did speak. Um, so I found that I used art uh, to communicate my identity and I sort of became the artist and I was the one that spent hours on school projects that should have taken a few hours. I would stay up way too long working on them um, just because that was, that was how I identified myself and I wanted to portray myself as impressive to my peers. Um, so creative conversations, ephemeral identity, I had challenged myself to reach out to people um, and engage in conversation, which sort of meant speaking unfiltered in the moment um, and sort of pushing past that um, shy, uh, shy person um, wall that I had sort of built around myself. Um, so I, you know, I engaged in these these conversations, um, and instead of using art as a means of com communication, I made art the motive for communication. Um, I think another motivation behind this project uh, was the lack of connection uh, to other creative people that I felt during COVID. Um, and I think a lot of artists can relate to this feeling, but there was sort of this um, impending pressure to utilize all of this time of isolation to create artwork 
um, because there were no distractions and we like couldn't do anything. Um, but after a while, like sitting in your studio can only provide so much inspiration for your work. Um, and I soon realized that going out and making connections is really what fuels the artistic process. Um, and I found that you know creating fills the soul, but even more so, genuine human connection fills the heart. Um, and so another thing that I was interested in doing was uh, collaborating. Um, so collaboration would be a form of connection to another artist. Um, you know, ideas build off of each other. You have these conversations, and you kind of feel it in your soul when you're having a really good creative conversation with another artist. Um, and it kind of refuels that excitement to create again. Um, and what, what many great artists um, I found have in common is their ability and their willingness to collaborate. So artists like Dean Michael Basquiat, you know, he was in the epicenter of New York City working with filmmakers, musicians, you know, artists of any medium. Um, making these connections in the art world eventually led him to collaborate with Andy Warhol and together the duo created some of the most uh, meaningful and striking works. Um, so I was especially excited um, to take this opportunity to talk to artists working in mediums very different from my own, um, just to see what their perspectives on life and art were and how they differed and also how they aligned. Um, and so one of, one of my really interesting interviews was with the jazz musicians uh, Richard and Iris, who um, are joining us today. Thanks for joining, guys. <laughs> Um, but uh, during the interview, Richard briefly mentioned his skepticism about, you know, how one art form can translate directly from a musical art form, and whether, for instance, a musician could feel inspired to write um, to write music after looking at a beautiful painting. Um, so I kind of took that as a challenge um, to create a piece myself as an artist about jazz. Um, sort of the reverse. Um, and then it was actually really funny because shortly after that conversation um, in the collage and assemblage class that I'm taking with Billy, we talked about the work of Romar Bearden, who um, he created many pieces inspired by improvisation, the improvisational aspects of jazz. Um, and he used like shape and texture to sort of um, embody that feeling of, of um, improv. And I think his work is probably the closest you could get to jazz in a visual art form. Um, and there was a, um, an English critic, Walter Patter, that said, all art continually aspires the condition of music. Um, Bearden did not paint with sound, of course, but he, more than most artists, seemed to have sensed a real connection between music and the formal properties of art. Um, so this piece is called Improv. Um, and during our talk, we sort of talked about um, the importance of, of knowing the history of the artwork and practicing your technique in order to be able to take advantage of these improvisational opportunities. Um, so I have references to like uh, music and also like the Italian words for certain ways of singing, uh, which I wanted to incorporate to um, connect to that idea of knowing the history and the background of your art in order to be able to to have an idea and actually um, be able to portray it or be able to perform it um, in the sense of jazz. Um, and one of Romer Bearden's quotes was, improvisation offers artists great scope for self-expression, but it is not totally free, not chance, not chaos. Improvisation succeeds only because it operates within structure. This is true for, the, for jazz solos and for Bearden's composition. So the, yeah, the, the composition being important and knowing like design elements in order to be able to make decisions about um, certain components of the artwork and actually to put them down on paper. Um, another thing we talked about was the importance of, of a pause or relief um, in your artwork. Um, so there's, there's small sections of uh, textured paper which I used um, as a form of, of negative space. And then as that translates to jazz music, the pause um, that's used can also emphasize the music that's played, you know, afterwards. And um, so I found that that connection also interesting. Um, and then in this piece, there's the artist 
uh, are connected sort of with rope and it's sort of how you, when you're either working with another artist or performing with another artist, you kind of become in sync with them. Um, and you have this like, um, almost like spiritual connection where you're, you're performing together in this, in this medium that you both love and are passionate about um, and how that just creates really genuine relationships um, is something that came up in all of my interviews um, and is something really special about art and that it, it connects people um, so genuinely and really gives you the sense of life. So I, I tried to <laughs> represent jazz to the best of my abilities in this work, um, but every artist work is going to be something that involves bringing their own perspective um, to anything they create or make on their own. And it's in the ability to make things your own and build off of ideas that creates the opportunity to take inspiration from the world around you. Um, art, in any form, allows you to give that energy back to the world, and it becomes a beautiful cycle. Um, these uh, conversations were an opportunity for each person, each, <laughs> each person to share their stories and talk open, openly about their passions. Um, and sort of my process was that I took notes um, on each interview and I recorded them, um, either if it was in person or on Zoom. Um, and I took notes on large pieces of paper, um, just like scribbled, um, just so that I could make sure that I was getting the most out of the interview. Um, and it helped me collect my thoughts on the discussion and then I would sit and uh, flip through old books and magazines with my notes. Um, and it sort of became a way to find metaphors that represented these poignant conversations. Um, and that's one of the things I love about collage is that it allows you to create metaphors and it sort of becomes poetic. So in a lot of these projects, I found that in addition to creating a, a visual art piece, I also found that I would create poetry, um, which is incorporated in a few of these pieces. Um, as I struggled to place each collage component, uh, thoughts turned into revelations. Art became a way to think, a, a philosophical exercise instead of a means of communication, as it was um, when I started my journey as an artist so long ago. After I finished all the interviews, I realized the notes I had been taking were a representation of my own artistic process and a reflection on my own shifting identity. The process became the material for the final piece and an investigation on my own identity as an artist. So I had these, um, these you know, big sheets of notes, and I knew that I wanted to display them somehow. Um, we had talked about just taping them up in the gallery, um, but instead I decided to use the notes as material for collages, so it was sort of interesting seeing how the, um, the, the process became the artwork in the end, um, which is, was sort of a nice way to bring all of my pieces together in the end. Um, and then I also used um, a technique of drip painting for each piece, um, just to kind of connect the series. And then it ended up being a great way to represent how, um, you know, as artists, we're trying to come together, we're trying to make connections. Um, and that's, that's one of the best parts of being an artist. Um, and then the strings also attach to um, each of the titles of the artists that I interviewed, so we have the philosopher, which was Chris Holmigan, <clears throat> the landscape architect, which is Caroline Sullivan, um, the female artist, Daphna Steinberg, and the musician, Richard and Iris. Um, and then below each title is the, um, the collage notes that I took on each of the interviews. And then it all connects to the heart because in making those connections, um, and freely talking about you know creative ideas, you kind of get this sense of life, and you sort of feel like you're on a whole other plane because you're you're talking about what you're passionate about um, and making connections with people, and that's sort of what it's all about. Uh, when you're creating art, life is more vivid and powerful, which uh, is the same feeling you get when you're in a room with people who are uh, receptive of your ideas and making connections. I began to see that each of these conversations, I was looking for clarity on my own identity. In this series, I thought I was using art as a means of, communicate, of communicating someone else's identity, when in fact I was communicating the connections that I had made to each person, and in turn my own identity. Um, by listening and finding connections across mediums, I made discoveries about my own shifting identity. In the same way that you see your own reflection when you look through the glass of a window, 
you see part of someone else's life, but you also see yourself reflected back. Um, so the only way to see ourselves is in the reflection, is in reflections of mirrors and also through these connections that we make with people. Um, so in a sense, it, it becomes a mirror of your own identity. Um, and it's constantly changing as you engage in more conversation and things become more or less clear. You collect connections and create a, nev a never ending collage of your life. Throughout the series, I found that I struggled to glue down each component of the collage because there was sort of a sadness to finalizing each piece. Um, and I know I talked to Billy about this, but when he visited my studio, all of the pieces that I had submitted for his class, I never actually glued down um, because there was, it was sort of a sadness to ending the investigation. Um, so I kind of learned that you know these, these montages that I have made are a snapshot of an identity that's frozen in time. I discovered nothing can fully represent the fluid identity of a human because connections must continue throughout your life and challenge us to look deeper. Um, I plan to continue the series of documenting um, the discoveries I make by dis connecting with other people who are passionate about really anything. Um, I plan to take this project with me in my travels and in my life as a reminder um, to take time to connect with people about what makes them feel just like great sense of life um, and continue the cy cycle of taking creative energy in but also releasing it back into the world through art. Thank you. <laughs> I'll, I'll now take questions at this time if anyone has any questions for me. I have a question. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> um, when you're talking about collaboration and the energy that comes out of it, and about the positive connection, I'm sure you can think of examples where the energy and the connection weren't necessarily positive, but they were energy. Mm -hmm. Right? Because yeah. as you were, I started to chuckle a little bit when you were talking about the sense of connection and spiritual connection, because arguably the greatest rhythm section in the history of, of modern jazz and straight ahead jazz was Miles in the 60s with Tony Williams on drums, Brian Carter on bass, and Kirby Hancock on piano. And famously, Ron Carter and Tony Williams, the drummer, hated each other's guts. <laughs> I mean, they would get off stage right. and do everything but punch each other out. And they are, without question, you ask any modern straight ahead player, they were the monstrously great of drums and bass in that idiom since 19, basically 1962. Um, so I think the issue is, if you hear any collaborative effort among musicians and there's no energy there, it's just a gig, mm -hmm. it sounds like it. Um, and so, but any emotion that's between them, sometimes, if it's handled properly, and Miles was very dictatorial, so he wasn't gonna put up with actual fist fights on the stage. Mm -hmm or unless he was in it himself, which he was known to get into also, but um, that's energy. Right. Uh, did you run across anything where you were seeing things where you were read about people who the energy that was in, in them had as much to do with high energy of, of a negative sense as a positive sense, it still, it still fueled the statement? Right, well I think, um, like I think when, whenever you connect with an artist of a different medium, there's definitely gonna be points of the conversation where you disagree. Um, and I think that, I mean, that could be a, a fault that maybe I didn't investigate, but I think it would be an interesting um, add-on to the series. I could just go around and argue with people and make, <laughs> make artwork about that. Because I think, yeah, you're right, there's a connection in, in being able to argue with someone, you have to know about them, even, even more so, even more on a deeper level than someone that you don't know that you're connecting with and maybe trying to impress with you know the information that you do have but if you're trying to argue with someone it's it's yeah it's different but that's that would be an interesting perspective yes i argue with people incessantly <laughs> and, and there's an amount of it that's probably the management of that quantity is important she she helps me with that Things like, hey, shut up, <laughs> yeah, thank God for Iris. <laughs> Final management issue. <laughs> Thanks, Richard. Courtney, 
Can you hear me? I have yep. another question for you. Yep. Okay, this is a this is a, um, a harder question. Sorry, Courtney, putting you okay. on the spot. Um, you know, I listened to you carefully talk about what you learned about yourself. You said you learned so much from talking to these different artists in these different areas, and and you were looking to find out things about them and make connections with them. And you said in turn that you learned things about yourself. So I'm curious if you could identify anything that you learned, what do you know about yourself that you didn't know before? Um, yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, I think part of me was going into each interview looking for answers about certain topics, um, which is how I think I, I ended up with these identifications for each of them. Um, so what I sort of think thought about initially was um, my interview with um, Daphne Steinberg, and she's also a female artist, so um, a lot of our conversations was sort of about, um, you know, how the woman becomes the object, even though she's the artist, and how artists like Frida Kahlo, you know, she was ama an amazing artist, but a lot of the things that are emphasized about her is her prolific, you know, love life and the men that she was sleeping with. Well, they never talk about that with, with male artists, you know, they don't talk about, you know, how many people they slept with, it's just not, it's not important, but as a female artist, it's, I think it's something to be aware of that a lot of the time, you can put your heart and soul into the work, but at the end of the day, if you stand in front of your work, you know, there's still a chance that you'll be objectified. Um, and that's just sort of the, the sad truth of being a female artist, but there's also, um, part of it is that, you know, in creativity, there's empathy, and they, they sort of um, coexist within, within in both, you have to be creative in order to be empathetic. And so as a female artist that experiences, you know, being objectified in whatever way that I might be, um, I can also empathize with, with other people that are misunderstood in, in their work just because of, of how they look. So yeah, I hope that answered your question. I mean, there's a, there's a ton that I learned I could, I could go through. Anything you say, you know, <laughs> answers the question. Yeah. Great. I have a question. Yes, mother. <laughs> <laughs> Are you working on anything right now that you're passionate about? Um, I think I'm going to take like a little break. <laughs> 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 um, and then, yeah, then I'll get back to you. <laughs> Let me have a question for you, May, about uh, about the aesthetics of, of what you've done. That uh, I think that when I look over it, that there's a there's a unifying aesthetic to it. it. Looks like you know, as I look in the gallery, look at the different walls. It's like that's you. Right. Like, it really seems like that's you. It really has a vision there. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering about sort of how you sort of threaded that, or sort of worked with that difficult line, sort of making it look like your work, but also making it look like a collaboration. How did that sort of where did that fit into to developing your, through your aesthetic? How did that sort of collaboration come out? And also sort of a parallel question, I wonder about the size of some of the images. How did that come into the decision? Some are large, some are small. You know, how did that, how did that happen? Yeah, that's, a, that's actually a really great question. Um, and I think part of that is just sort of that inherently, um, even though I was, you know, trying to convey someone else's identity as, as best as I possibly could, there was still like, my inherent, you know, design ideas or just like creative identity um, that I was going to represent these people in the way, the only way that I knew how, um, and and just looking at different materials and sort of what I talked about before with the metaphors. It was sort of subconsciously as I flipped through magazines or looked at different materials, those were the things that I was connecting with about that person. So I think it it kind of naturally created this this aesthetic. Um, because in, in, in the end, each one was also about my own identity. Um, and then what was the second part of your question? Size. Oh, the size. size. Um, yeah, I think, I definitely started off smaller, but I think, in, I think my last piece especially ended up being so much larger, um, just because I wanted to represent, like, how I, um, 
interpreted all of them all at once, you know? So it's like, this piece is about five people, you know, including myself, um, or I guess six people, um, because it's a two jazz musician. Um, so I think it was just like trying to create space to convey even more ideas about myself. Um, I needed a bigger canvas almost. Great, thank you. Yep, thanks. Anyone else have any further questions? We'll wrap it up. Wait, one more thing. Courtney? Yep. Sorry. Go ahead. Go. You're, you're fine. Another. Oh. Yeah. Kim, I think I think we lost you for a second. Be in it as your <laughs> Sorry, Kim, we I didn't oh, I didn't hear the first part. We lost you for a second. Sorry, my internet's being weird. The work is beautiful and I see you in it and having taught you since you know in ninth grade, I can still see the connection between this work and that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also want to say, like, collage is hard to do. It's one of those things that, like, it might look easy, and it's so much harder to do successfully. Um, so I think your work is just beautiful. I wanted to ask, did you make the frame for that um, larger <laughs> The frame is actually something that um, my friend Peter picked up because he knew that I was I was looking for um, some sort of frame to convey that idea of like reflected identity. Um, so I, I had to like refurbish it. I, I mentioned I used his shop to like sand it and paint it. Um, but yeah, that's, that's how Great. I ended up with that piece, yeah. But yeah, I, I think about the pieces that I made in AP art and I actually was collaging then. I, I don't know if you remember, I used um, newspaper um, and then I drew on the newspaper and it was um, sort of talking about um, how the news in the world affects um, who children become. Um, so yeah, I can remember you were collaging in ninth grade. Yeah, yeah, and we did those artist trading cards. That's where it all started. I still have them. Yeah, <laughs> that's great.